Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more geography now. In France, you're up on the list. The home of the great Napoleon. Uh, yes, I uh, learned, learned a lot about Napoleon, so at least I know a lot about, you know, you're like, I'm assuming, like, to you guys, he's, like, you know, extremely awesome. But I think he's pretty awesome because I did a... Uh, like a whole series on him so <laughs> so if you want to check that out you can go check out my napoleon series but anyway yeah so he's really cool and like france is like kind of like in the center of everything there in europe and you got a lot of cool history um i really don't know much french i'm canadian but i wasn't you know i didn't really i wasn't you know brought up in the french you know the french side of canada we took it to school for a little bit so uh i'm sorry it's like uh messy boku you know and the, for watching uh my channel right now <laughs> but uh yeah i'm gonna learn uh get a lot more cool stuff about your country you know obviously well-known country uh definitely been on the stage as far as like battles and war and conflict in the past and and it seems to always you know prevail so uh this will be, I think, it's be really interesting. It's actually a 16-minute Geography Now video, which is pretty impressive because usually they're around 10 minutes. And so this one's like, you know, they need the extra time. You guys got so I'm sure they got a lot to talk about, got a lot more to learn, obviously. And, uh, yeah, this should be pretty cool. And uh, before we start the video, please hit that like and subscribe. Please and thank you. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. And, yeah, let's get on with it. I'm going to be very disappointed if this, like, if France does not mention Napoleon. I mean, not France, that if uh, Geography Now doesn't mention Napoleon. Because that was an awesome series, and, yeah, very impressive. But anyways, let's jump to it. All right. All right. Let's give this a shot. Uh-oh. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, yeah. en huitième de mois est français. J'ai donc en quelque sorte une obligation de honorer mon héritage. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your right. host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. Yes. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, really? grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. Alors, allons-y. The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce wow. possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, gros garçon. France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the département et territoire d'outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we yeah, it's just one of those things that uh, I always, like, you, you never think of or you just don't know, uh, is that, you know, the big countries like France, you know, they, they've been all over the place. I mean, they've been all over the world conquering, you know, a lot of land, and they still have a big portion of that land they conquered. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of cool that he's diving into this, so. Otherwise known as the Département et Territoire d'Outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we tell you what they are, let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws, except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, 
by the way, has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth, okay. and Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French Polynesia, you've probably heard of Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Wallace and Futuna in the Pacific, Saint Pierre and Miquelon right off the coast of Canada, Saint Barlemy and Saint Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located on huh. the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet Islands, and <laughs> Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, yeah. the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands okay. are mostly uninhabited and only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it. And last but not least, there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. Hey, New wow. Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks wow. to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. Okay, now let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western <laughs> Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I was always under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with really Mainland think it France looks is like also divided into 13 regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, and as well as the main cultural and commercial Paris. center, Paris. We could talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, oh, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, aux champs Elysees. But that in itself would take too long, and we gotta get through three more segments. <laughs> the busiest airports are the two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte and the second and third largest cities, Lyon Saint Exupéry and Marseille Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about France sure. is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which wow. speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. These regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food which is great because we're going to discuss more about it in... If you look at France's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan yeah. France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône entangle the entire country north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in wow. every corner rich of the country. Land. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation and voila you have an agricultural gold mine in fact out of every this reminds me of, like history no wonder you know france and france well obviously it's, it's huge it's the biggest country in europe but you know no wonder the population was also huge because like the land was just so rich you know soil and everything you know just for farming and everything just everybody probably wanted to live there just because uh i don't know just how great you know it seemed to be so it's pretty awesome yeah, I, 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 like, I like that it's not flat that has like rolling hills you know kind of adds to it green hills that are just begging for cultivation and voila you have an agricultural cool. gold mine in fact out of every country in the eu france reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience and only a few spots like in the caucasus region and parts of eastern europe and southern russia rank higher so there you go huh. food haven in the south you reach the mountainous <laughs> regions of france including the pyrenees along the border with spain the massif central plateaus one of the most geologically studied places in europe due to this strange formation the alps all along the borders with italy and switzerland by the way switzerland was all like mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans. It's mine! And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe. Some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia <laughs> of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the largest consumers of cheese with over 1,200 different varieties wow. from all over the country. The French also have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat, and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, wow. horse, frogs, and snails horse. are consumed regularly. Speaking of which, the wow. national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French-affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect-eating, countries in Europe, as about 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the Didn't French, especially in Burgundy, the largest snail-producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half of the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous for their charcuterie and fondue. Is that a thing though? Or do, like, do people get, like, you know, I'm assuming like this is caring or mad. I mean, I guess it's a toss up, but wow, D did not know that. Uh, do people get like, I don't know, I mean, like, even, I don't know, get sick a lot from your raw meat or something over there. Maybe someone lives over there can tell me. I mean, is it, I think that your body could, would come accustomed to it after a while. I know if you've grown up like that. So I wouldn't think so, but I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know. That's interesting, though. <laughs> this guy's mad aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous for their charcuterie and fondue, Brittany for its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, La Veyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. Wow. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks to combat crop wastage on farms. France has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Other than foodstuffs though, main exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, and steel, electronics, motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories wow. and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate, Guyana being part of the Amazon having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95%, with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines and a common volcanic Beautiful, activity though. going on. The scattered islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation. Kerwellen has these cabbage-looking things going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins so stampeding cool. off the coasts. New Caledonia and French Polynesia are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, that's awesome. Like, you know, I guess you think of, you know, yeah, when I think of France, you know, I guess the, uh, you know, when the environment and all these like lush places doesn't really come to mind, except for obviously, like, you know, you know it's your rolling hills. But like the outside side never comes to mind, but yeah, you guys got a lot going on when it comes to nature and stuff. That is so cool. You never really think about France and nature when it comes to France, but that's cool to see. That is, that's beautiful. Islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is the euro, no. they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the channel. Now let's talk about the white people. Most white 
white French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions. It's true, because right side of the road, I mean, we drive on the right side of the road over here. And so that would be confusing to me to go to, you know, Great Britain and drive on the left side of the road. Uh, so I guess there's got to be like a lot of signs because they get that tunnel. When you come over, just, you know, maybe to let you, to let you know that you have to, you know, you know, switch sides of the road, I'm guessing, you know, I'm not sure how that works, but I'm assuming there'd be a lot of signs, warning, like a lot of warning signs. That's interesting. Uh, or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic I mean, like, the French and the English, like, it's like the classic, like, two powers, like, and just in, like, history in general, like, I just think of them as, like, the two superpowers, like, throughout, like, history, because, you know, it seems like a lot of wars, like, you know, revolve around them, and there's, like, just a lot of, like, they're the big, uh, you, you know, the big rivals amongst each other, you know, they they always seem to be, like, you know, in history, there's a lot of war between the two countries. Obviously, not anymore, but I mean, I'm sure there's still like a good rivalry, you know, there between you know, Britain and France. So, I always thought that would that always that you know, kind of thing was always kind of cool. as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is, of course, the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in huh. Occitania. Corsicans have, like, this strange half-French, half-Italian, hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside oh. of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say, Sac a marché, tout bon man, ti mal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffe, comment il est, à où? France is the most visited country in the world as more people than the entire population of France visit France and at about 80 million. Wow. Culture-wise, there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing, anglophone-driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. In addition, really? the French media's top regulators, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between wow. the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And half of the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. France is, of course, home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemists Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like Ramelot, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons, Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, and Kristen Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, wow. Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about Kings Louis XIV and 
XVI, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon. In a simple way go. of putting it, it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still in the very least identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country wow. in the developed world. And I they wish. also have some of the shortest work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to I relax need to move and to take France. a nap. They even have a word for it, l'heure de l'apéro, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the last thing you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's nap during a six-hour shift with corporate <laughs> policy changes. Yep, the world can be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. Right, when it comes to France, they don't discriminate. They hate everyone equally. No, but seriously, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, uh -huh. and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by Sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe. So cool. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred years war with them and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media. A hundred years war. I haven't done that yet. I definitely got to make a note of that for a future series. I'm doing Caesar right now, but like I got definitely got to make a note of that to do a hundred years war down the line because that'd be really cool. Busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Aww. Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically, the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Ever since right. the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little mm. brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, the Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air des symboles, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de touristes qui piétinent vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie, et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leur désir sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony, Gabon, is coming up. Wow, that's it. That's a lot to take in there for uh, for France. But like they said, there's so much to mention and say. You can't really fit it into one video. Like, like you said, you could have like a whole YouTube channel just on France and have so much content. But, yeah, definitely very interesting stuff. And uh, I guarantee I'll do, end up doing a bunch of different kind of, you know, France-related videos uh, in the future when it comes to war and maybe just culture and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure those, I'll end up doing a bunch of those down the line. But anyways, another great video about geography now. France, kicking butt over here, man. I need to move there with a short work week. Now, you get, now I'll actually get to sleep in a little bit.
like welcome me to your country <laughs> but anyway I, I would definitely love to visit there though i guess I, like i've said before i'd love to like visit had all of europe and i'm sure a big portion of that probably would be in france because i i love to see the sights and you know try some of you know french food and you know just mingle a little bit so anyways guys i hope you like this video please hit the like and subscribe if you have me i'd really appreciate it and if you're from france and you're new from france or i will just new my channel in general and you know go check out the napoleon series it was pretty cool i was i was definitely impressed with it because i knew nothing about napoleon going into it and that was a lot of fun i'm actually glad they actually mentioned them in this video so even if it was just a name drop but anyways guys thank you for watching i really appreciate it and i will catch you guys in future videos peace